David Ingleby for Dingo Servo Mounts and today I want to introduce you to our new multi servo control board. It comes in two parts essentially. This is the motherboard which will do all the heavy lifting and then you have little plug-in modules. Uh, this is a signal module, oh, sorry, signal module. The yellow ones and the red ones are for points and uh, animations and crossing gates etc 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 so how does it work so essentially what you have here is a input for your power a 12 volt DC power goes into there these are where your switches would go for your uh, various units the top uh, one is a common and then you have board one board two board three board four and those would be the switches that would all short to the common over there. Across the top we have four uh, servo connectors. Again, they would plug in with the black or brown, dark brown uh, lead to the outside. That's why there's a white dot over there. And that would be board one, board two, board three, board four again. And over here we have our little setting jumpers. Again, you go board four, board three, board two, board one, and the jumper goes across from red to white. And then when you're not using the jumper, place it across any two of the white terminals. Not the red ones, the white ones. It must be across the white ones, just for storage. And then over here, you have the socket where our standard um, setting box plugs in with its uh, associated cable and that would plug into the port over there. Now, to assemble the board, what you'd initially do would be to take these two screws out here. And then lift this whole unit off. This is just a clamp to hold the board in place while the unit's being operated so that they don't fall out or anything like that. And then you will see once it's open there are four sockets here which would take the four of the eight pins onto each of the four sockets so they go in essentially into the gap and it plugs in there never plug the modules in while the unit is powered up and um, i say there's a, a red one so you can plug in as many as you like the joy of this board is that you're not tired to all four points or all four signals, you can basically mix and match as you go. So you can have all four points or all four signals, three and one, two and two, whatever you want, and it will all work. So that's the basic board. Now let me show you what it looks like in operation. Okay, so moving on, this is a test setup which I use it shows to demonstrate what's going on uh, as previously mentioned there we have the switches there's my four switches going into that unit over there this is a 12 volt power supply I've just got a, a, um, a socket on there because it makes it easier to plug in and out and there are the four servo connectors and the relevant four servos over here so this is board one be that one etc etc and when I operate them you will see that they do as they are. So the yellow boards, as I said before, are for signals, so they will have the bouncy software in them. Okay. They will have all the bouncy software in them. The red boards are for point motors, so they will just move from side to side very gently. At a nice slow speed, so that you can move them as you want. And that's simply all there is to it. Now, I uh, want to now take a little bit further uh, and just point out some things here. You will see that there's a little green LED over there which lights up when the board is live. And on top of the uh, what seems here, you have a little yellow light on the yellow boards and a little red light on the red boards. Now, I've also figured out which way my switches are because if you look in the setting instructions on the uh, PDF document you'll find that it need, you need to know which way 
your switches open. So as they are at the moment down, the switches are open and when they move to that direction then they are closed. So let's uh, do a little bit of setting up now and show you what's going on. First of all, I have my setting box which I'm going to plug into the socket over there and uh, that would then give me my, my settings. The first thing I've done is I've made sure that the two controls are in the central position. Then I'm going to grab my little jumper and I'm going to set uh, board 4 just for argument's sake because it's uh, a point motor board. So I put the jumper on there, you'll notice the little light flashes twice and now the setting box is live. If I can try and get that all into the same place, there we go. So I will set that side first to wherever I need it to be. Once I've got it set, I move the switch the other way and I set the other one to wherever I need it to be. Once I've got it set, all I do is pull off the setting pin and it is now written to the chip. And that's all there is to it. And at any time if I need me to change that, I put the chip, the uh, unit back on again and after the couple of sessions I can then move it to wherever I need to be, remove the setting jumper, the light comes back on and there it goes. So like I said, when you put the jumper on initially, uh, you get two flashes of the LED and after a second after that then the setting box is active and uh, once you take the setting box off or remove the jumper you can do it either way you can either take off the jumper remove the setting box here or even unplug it from the back of the box and that will put it into setting mode obviously at least put it into run mode obviously in order to make sure that you don't reset it uh, you need to remove the jumper from the board and that essentially is all there is to setting it up the same goes for the signal boards, so if I plug a jumper on there, oops, wrong one, plug a jumper in there, again two flashes and then it's settable, and I can then set the one position, move the switch to the other side, set the other position, once set, move the jumper, and uh, it is now operational. One way it bounces and the other way it gives you a double pull as per normal. And that's all there is to it. Uh, a very simple system. They are now available in stock uh, and you can order them from the website. You can order the motherboard separately and then whatever modules you want to add to it. Obviously you don't have to set up all four modules at the, first, at the, the uh, initial setting. If you just want to control two points, you can use this board, control two points, but then have space to add two more at a later stage or something like that. Or if you're going to use points and signals, but you haven't got the signals ready just yet, put the points in on the motherboard, and then when you're ready for signals, order the board for the signals and drop them in as well. I'm quite impressed with this. I think it's a very versatile board and uh, much more user friendly than a lot of other boards on the market and uh, I'm quite hopeful for uh, this board to become quite a, a standard in the model railway industry. This is David Ingleby for Dingo Server Mounts and thank you for watching.